What's up guys? So when I bought this house, I became the not so proud owner of this busted section of sidewalk at the end of my driveway. In this video, we're gonna fix it using Rapid Set's 24-6 concrete mix, taking it from this to this. In this video, you'll learn how to remove the existing sidewalk, how to build the forms and pour the concrete for the new sidewalk, and finally, how to finish the concrete so that you can get a result that's much better than the starting photos we just showed. If that sounds good, let's get into it. So here's a look at the segment of concrete sidewalk we're gonna replace, starting there and going to this control joint at the other end. I'm gonna use an angle grinder to cut deep within that control joint so that when we jackhammer it, it'll be a clean line across. So as you can see, I'm using this angle grinder with a diamond blade to essentially saw cut into this concrete sidewalk and make a deep cut so that when we jackhammer around it, it'll hopefully break off clean and it won't result in any chips. Okay, so at this point, it's time to remove the existing sidewalk and to do that, we're gonna use a jackhammer. Now you're probably asking yourself, Andrew, why do you own a jackhammer? To which I would respond, I don't, I own two. Now I bought these on Craigslist for like a couple hundred bucks, it was a steal. So if you're not looking for used tools on Craigslist, you should probably start. So at this point, I got the jackhammer all set up and started going to town on this concrete sidewalk. Now, because probably 99.9% .9 of people don't own a jackhammer, you can obviously rent one of these from Home Depot or Lowe's, but the whole jackhammering process is pretty straightforward. The only thing I would say is it's pretty heavy and everything involving concrete is pretty labor intensive. So make sure that you're in good shape to be doing this. It's gonna probably break your back for the day or two afterwards though. Just fair warning. And in case you were wondering, here's what a jackhammer looks like in slow motion. Now you know. Okay, so at this point in the project, you gotta get your caution tape up, save those pedestrians, I don't know, a twisted angle at worst. So at this point, we've finished the demo process by removing the large chunks of concrete sidewalk. And here on the other end, you can see along that control joint, we're chipping away and it actually broke off pretty clean. So we finally finished jackhammering everything. I'm gonna keep the smaller stones in there. They're gonna serve as the sub base backfill. And then I have some 57 stone that I'm gonna put in now. And once we do that, we'll be almost ready to pour the concrete. Okay, so we got our 57 stone here. We can't pull it, unfortunately, because we're, we're incredibly weak, but we're gonna move it to the wheelbarrow and then we'll put it in our excavated area. Typically, you wanna have around four inches of gravel sub base and then a four inch sidewalk, but a lot of contractors will skip the sub base if we're being honest. Okay, so before we do anything else, I'm gonna use this hand tamp just to compact the stone. You wanna make sure that you compact it before you lay the concrete to basically minimize the amount of settling over time. So we'll compact it right now. It's not fun, I'll be honest with you, but you gotta do it. And although concrete has great compressive strength, it's a little bit weak in tension. So we're gonna use some steel wire mesh reinforcement to go in the middle of the concrete. Fortunately, I didn't have to cut mine, but if you do, you can use tin snips or you can use an angle grinder with a metal blade. I'm positioning it in place now and you'll see how we put it in the concrete in a minute. Okay, so at this point, we have our stone compacted. The only thing left to do is we need to put a form here, which I'm gonna use a two by four. And what that's gonna do is when I position it in place, it's gonna be flush with both of the other ends of the sidewalk. So when I actually take a board and I screed the surface, it'll be flat on this side, flat on this side and all the concrete is gonna go in between. So now all I have to do is position this. Let's see how it goes. So this is a bit of a unique situation for forms. Typically you would need them on both sides, but I'm positioning the one board in place so that's at the same height of the segment of sidewalk on either end. And then I'm getting it level and recompacting any sub base that might've been displaced. Okay, so at this point we have our form set up. You can see it's not perfect, but the idea is I have it even between these two. You'll see when we pour the concrete, we can make up that gap. It's no issue. I had a little bit of chipping there, but we'll figure it out. And then this is basically gonna run all the way across our sidewalk area. So before we actually apply the concrete, I always like to spray some WD-40. This is gonna act as a form release so that the concrete doesn't stick to our form. Now I'll just use a cloth here to kind of rub it in. So at this point, it's time to actually pour the concrete. And for this sidewalk, we're using Rapid Set's 24-6 concrete mix. This mix is good for sidewalks because it cures within like 10 to 24 hours and you can get back to using the sidewalk basically the next day. Also for this project, I'm using something called the mud mixer to mix up the concrete. This makes mixing pretty easy and a lot less labor intensive, but if you don't have access to this, I have a bunch of other ways you can mix concrete. And I have a video showing those different ways that you can click here. 
So to begin the concrete mixing process, you're going to hook up the hose to the mud mixer, take your 24-6 concrete mix, load it into the hopper, then you're going to adjust how much water is coming out of your hoses here until you get the perfect consistency coming out of the mud mixer and into your sidewalk area. For this sidewalk project, we needed around 40 bags of concrete, which the mud mixer can handle in about one hour. So essentially, you're gonna use a shovel, you're gonna use the pivot feature on the mud mixer, basically fill the first two inches of the sidewalk area with concrete. Once we get half the thickness of the slab in place, we're gonna take our steel wire mesh reinforcement and we're gonna place it in the concrete at this point so that it will be directly in the center of that concrete sidewalk. Make any adjustments to the placement of the wire mesh so that there's around one inch of clearance on either side. And after getting it positioned where you need it, continue to put concrete on top of it. And at this point, we're gonna move the mud mixer to the other side and repeat that same process with a cinematic time-lapse. At this point, we've filled up the entire sidewalk area with concrete and we're gonna use a flat board to screed the surface using the board on the left and the concrete apron on the right as our screeding surfaces. Fill in any low spots and then you can use a reciprocating saw without a blade to vibrate the concrete, filling in any air bubbles. There was a bit of concrete that built up on the concrete apron that I removed, but this actually was more problematic than I realized and I'll talk about that lesson learned in a minute. After screeding the surface of the concrete, you wanna let it set up and cure for a little bit so that it hardens and then you're gonna take a concrete finishing trowel and smooth out the surface. I was a bit rushed on this project, so I started finishing it before it was really ready. It was a little bit too wet to be finishing, but this is kind of another lesson learned that I'll talk about at the end of the video. After getting the surface of the concrete relatively smooth, we're gonna use a concrete edging trowel, and we're gonna run it along the edges of the concrete to give us a rounded edge. As mentioned previously, you typically wanna let the concrete cure a little bit more before you use an edging trowel, but we had to rush it here and it worked out okay. Just a little bit longer would have been preferential. Use a concrete finishing trowel to remove any of the hard edges created by your edging trowel. And remember, the surface of the concrete doesn't need to be perfect at this time since we're gonna use a broom finish at the end. After using the edging trowel on both sides of the sidewalk, I'm gonna use this grooving tool to create a control joint every four feet along the length of the sidewalk. This grooving tool is gonna to create a small weak point in the concrete so that when it cracks in the future, it'll hopefully crack within that intentional weak point, which is called a control joint and not the face of the sidewalk. After adding your control joints with the grooving tool, use a finishing trowel to remove any hard edges, just like we did with the edging trowel. I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but you definitely wanna let the sidewalk cure a little bit longer before doing this. As you can see, it's definitely a bit more runny than you want it to be at this stage. Here's how we look so far with the control joints added to the sidewalk. And at this stage, we're gonna give our concrete a broom finish. Although some people don't like the look of a broom finish, it's definitely the most common way to finish a sidewalk. And this broom finish is gonna do two things. One, it's gonna help to hide any imperfections in your finishing surface. And two, it's gonna add a lot of friction and traction to the sidewalk to make it more non-slip for pedestrians. I also use the broom finish for the entryway to my house and I'll link that video below if you wanna check it out. At this point, the project is basically done and all we need to do is let the concrete cure. Let's take a look at the final result and then I'm gonna go through a couple lessons learned. So now that you've seen the final result and you've probably picked up on some of the imperfections, let's talk about the lessons learned. Lesson one is with concrete, don't give yourself any time constraints. I had dinner plans that I had to make, so I was rushing to finish this. I thought it would go a lot faster than it did, but like most things, it took longer. So I was in a rush and I had to finish the concrete before it had a chance to cure. It just is not a good situation to be in. So make sure you allocate an entire day and give yourself more time than you think you need to finish the concrete. Lesson two is to prevent your concrete from getting on the adjacent segments of sidewalk or on the apron. What this did was create kind of like a discoloration on the apron and the other sections of sidewalk that got contacted by the new concrete, which just makes it look a little bit splotchy. It's not uniform and it looks a bit unprofessional. So if you're going to be doing this, I recommend that you protect the adjacent sections or at least power wash any of the concrete that you might have got on those segments so that it looks more uniform and not discolored. And finally, concrete finishing is an art. It's not easy and I'm still learning. So if you're a professional and you've been doing this a while, leave me some tips down below so that I can get better and also help out others watching this video. If you like this video, by the way, drop a like down below and subscribe and I will see you on the next one. Thanks again.